Today I'm going to be talking about how I managed to get an A-star in A-level biology, what I did to achieve this, and what I suggest for you to also achieve it. What I'm going to talk about today are my top three tips on how to improve your biology grade. I'm not going to really discuss how best to revise, because there's better videos out there, I might even make one myself at some point, but I'm going to give you my top three tips that I thought I used that helped me improve my grades. Now I'm well aware many people find the biology A-level pretty hard compared to some of the other A-levels, whereas I think with other A-level subjects there's quite a lot of just pure learning and then writing, so maths, to some extent you can just learn the types of questions there are and then you can do most of them. Same with chemistry, you could pretty much do well in that, as well as some maths equations. Whereas in biology there's quite a few questions where you've got to really you know, think about the question, what does this graph show, what does this experiment show, which is quite unlike some of the other A-levels out there. And so lots of people found it pretty hard, and that's always why the grade boundaries for the actual A-level exams for biology were pretty low. And I understand that. Everyone found it pretty hard, and it takes a bit of getting used to compared to what you had to do for GCSE, where you almost just spat out, wrote, learn answers with very little analysis. Bearing that in mind, here are my top three tips on how you can improve your A-level biology grade. I think the first one is key and probably the most obvious is just past papers, past papers, past papers. I think past papers are key to actually getting a good grade in A-level biology. Specifically, I'd say, you know, even more so than some other A-level exams. And that's because you've got to be able to see the types of questions they can ask and how they can ask them in all the different ways. And the best way you understand that and how they ask them is looking at the papers because they're most like what you're going to be sitting at in the exam. And you'll be able to see how they ask about the different types of analysis, how they present that information, and also you get a really good mark scheme that basically spells out what points they're looking for that allows you to basically learn what they're looking for when a specific type of question comes up. So let's see, say it's a graph, you know, looking at life expectancy of mice or something like that when one has cancer and one doesn't have cancer. You'll be able to see what they're looking for in terms of how to actually describe that graph and how to explain that graph, um, depending on the question. And so the best way of doing that is basically just to do lots of those answers and pass papers are key to be doing that. So I think they're in, in really important and I did lots and lots of them. There are you know, websites you can find all these past papers on going back you know, years and years and years. I would save the ones closest to you know, the most recent exam for sooner because they're probably gonna be closest to what your exam's gonna be like because they change the syllabuses every couple of years. So I would start further back pretty early. You, know, you could even go back into if you're starting in year 12, you could even do the old AS exams to kind of, you know, use your knowledge there because it will bring together the whole knowledge from, you know, that first year of A-level biology into some exams that you can easily do, mark and learn from the mark schemes. I think the most important here, thing here with these past papers is not to kind of do them, see your grade and then go, oh, I've got to go and revise harder, just write some more notes or something like that. I think these papers are key to actually learn from them and it's how you learn from them that's really important. So I recommend doing lots of past papers, yes, but also you know, seeing where you've gone wrong. And there'll be some areas that you know you find harder, maybe focus on revising those areas more, but also really spend time that if you get something wrong, make sure you're getting the wording right for what they're looking for, and make sure you're you know, reading that mark scheme, analyzing that mark scheme, and really taking the time to go over these past papers, because they're more important than almost than writing the notes, because you're going to have that knowledge built up over the two years, but it's how you apply that knowledge that's really important. And past papers are absolutely key in being able to do that. And now onto my second point. I think it's make it fun. Don't just write notes. I think lots of people, especially because it's, you know, you're coming in from GCSEs, which is a lot of note writing, just like to write notes and notes and notes about what the teacher's saying, what the textbook says. And I think this is honestly one of the worst ways of learning. And you kind of learn that more as you go to university and you can't really just learn from notes anymore. But when you're in sixth form, you've got to start making that change. And I think it's important to have base level notes covered, but it's how you like kind of learn those notes and put it into your memory uh, that's important. And it's, in my opinion, I did the way I did it is I made it fun. I tried to make my learning fun and engaging. So I'd stay interested in it because just to me, just reading a textbook was not that interesting and you know listening to your teachers droning on about a topic is not that interesting even though I really like biology it's still not that interesting and there's going to be days where you don't really want to pay attention so it's about making you know that knowledge fun and biology is an interesting subject it kind of explains how the world works so it's easy to get engaged but you just got to make it fun when you do it 
And I think by making it fun, it kind of stays in your brain longer because you'll remember how you did it and how best you did it. And so here's some ways that I basically did it. I think a really good one is flashcards uh, for the stuff where you just have to learn it. There is always some stuff in A-levels in a where you've just got to learn the subject. You've got to learn the content and you know, the names of things, how things happen, what the definitions of things are. Flashcards are really key for that. So you could use something like Anki, which is a really good program. Other study tubers, you know, recommend where basically you put in your flashcards that you want to learn and then it will ask you whether or not you got it right. And the ones you get right, it shows you less because you know it. And the ones you don't um, come up more frequently. And it's basically got that space repetition where, you know, stuff keeps coming up to make sure you've tested it. But over time, it gets further and further apart. So you just keep topping up your um, memory. I think I also really enjoy drawing like kind of large mind maps and really colorful mind maps with kind of diagrams of how things worked. Uh, and I think for me, diagrams are really key in biology because a lot of things are, you know, quite cell level or organism level, like, you know, how the different cells work, how stem cells work, how kidneys work, how the heart works. You can draw diagrams with these that you can label, you can color in, and that kind of act of writing it down and doing it is so much better than notes because it's going to stay in your memory and you're going to be able to see that picture when you come to exam time and you've got to remember that stuff. I think the thing that really helped me the most was making videos. If you look at other videos on this channel, there's quite a few A-level content videos and those are topics I picked while I was doing A-levels that I wanted to learn more about um, and that I felt would make good videos and I produced a video about it. And I think the whole aspect of writing a script recording it, creating the video, editing the video, watching the video multiple times when I was doing it, um, you know, spending that time doing the video really got it stuck in my memory. And that whole process was fun and enjoyable and I enjoyed doing it because, you know, it allowed me to make videos for this channel. It was something I enjoyed doing. So I'm not saying necessarily do that, but find something, you know, you like doing, be it song, videos, um, drawing, something like that. And kind of use that aspect to you know, turn your learning into something fun to help it stick into your memory. And that will make it so much easier to learn the content. Uh, I know it did for me. And that's my biggest thing. It's like, make sure you're not bored with the learning. Um, otherwise you're gonna get tedious and you're gonna lose that passion to actually learn for your subjects and learn your A-levels. And if you're not passionate about it, you're gonna really struggle to keep that content and stay motivated to actually learn that content. And so that's some advice from me. I think the third one is, kind of links into that, into making it fun, is and having kind of trying to become passionate for your subject, is reading around. I think this is absolutely key. I think you've got to try and connect with the syllabus that you're being taught. And if you end up disliking the subject and being bored with the subject, it's going to be really hard to learn it when you've got to kind of revise for your exams and get it into your head when there's no teachers prompting you and sending you homework and things like that. So I think it's key to try and stay and gain some passion for those subjects. And I think that's relatively easy to do for biology, even though, you know, I've done a biology degree, so I'm a bit of a sucker for that. But I think even if biology is not your favorite subject, there's still gonna be things, I mean, hopefully you have some interest because you picked it for an A-level subject, but there's gonna be some things in the biology syllabus that you're gonna be interested about, hopefully. So let's say, for example, kidneys. And I would suggest, you know, the, sometimes when you find things you're interested in, go and research it a bit further to find out more about it. and maybe find, read a bit more advanced than you already know to try and, you know, just expand your knowledge a little bit and find out why the kidneys work, what makes the kidneys go wrong, maybe some kidney diseases, things like that, just to try and keep yourself interested and expand your knowledge. I highly would recommend, now I've done a degree and things like that, and know what I you have to do in a degree, especially for biology, is going to look at some kind of review papers, overviewing the kidneys and how they work. There'll be some out there and they'll be really useful because you'll be able to see how a research paper is properly done, how analysis is properly done, and how you know the analysis is already explained for you and things like that. And it'll be quite high level analysis. And that's the kind of analysis you know they'll be looking for in a more simple level, but the same kind of you know explain and describe analysis questions in the exam. And so if you see how it's written in papers and how it's analyzed in papers, I think it's really useful when you you know come to the exam to know how to actually describe something, how to write something. And that's on top of already looking at the mark schemes. I mean, the mark schemes for the papers, as I said, are key because that's exactly what they're looking for. But this kind of review papers, looking at let's say kidneys or heart function in general, will really allow you to flesh out your knowledge and flesh out your understanding of how you can analyze things and describe things. And that's really useful. 
And while it's probably more complicated than you need to know, it's really useful in expanding your knowledge because when you actually come to the questions and actually come to applying your knowledge later on, it will almost seem easier and more simple to apply those core concepts you're uh, learning in A-level biology. Now you know slightly more advanced concepts and slightly more advanced knowledge about how something works. And I think that's really useful. And on top of that, I think it's really useful for the essay part of the exam question. So in paper three, at least for AQA when I was doing it, there was an essay where you had to bring together the whole two years of content and write about, you know, something like hydrogen bonds or something like that and their function in biology. I think if you know extra content, that was how you got top marks in that exam. And that kind of essay was kind of just putting information onto the paper. And so if you've learned the information through, you know, uh, your revision, your flashcards, your, you're making it fun revision, and then you're also bringing in that extra reading, you'll do really well in that essay. And so I think that's the three things that I've talked about, you know, how I got an A-star in animal biology, is that I made it fun, I used lots and lots of past papers, and I read around to help, you know, educate myself about more advanced biology topics, and that made it easier when I had to apply the stuff I was learning in A-level biology, and it helped keep me interested in the biology. And that's, you know, kind of what kept me to go and do a degree where I learned even more about biology. And I'm not saying you have to want to go and do a biology degree to follow this guide, but hopefully you see that, you know, I'm, I think it's key to try and stay passionate and find things you like in the biology syllabus to stay entertained, even if biology is not your overall passion. Hopefully you picked it as an A-level because you're some level or passionate about it. And so it's about finding those areas to help keep you engaged in the syllabus, stay motivated, stay revising, and hopefully get a good grade. Please let me know how you found the video. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.